प्रभु तव मुरति विनोदकारी फलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी ए ह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी ए ह गणेशम महाराज नी जे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जे ठाकुर जी महाराज नी जे Supreme Almighty, our beloved Vira Gansha Maharaj and Thakurji Maharaj. Nonetheless, the path maker to our liberation, our dear Puja Guruji. Puja Santo and all you Bhaktos Jai Swami Narayan Ki. The whole world is comprised of rules and regulations that everyone abides by, mostly. For some countries, rules and regulations are more strict. For other countries, rules and regulations are a little more lenient. But from those rules and regulations, each and every country's, you can say, level of economy, level of social, you can say, gathering, level of crime, level of principles, level of moral and level of ethics, all decipher and all differentiate because of one government may be very strict, may not even allow even one piece of garbage in the street, and another government might be very, very lenient where they understand that the people are not that capable of following the rules and regulations to that strict of a point. Now, saying that, one thing is that each and every country has to follow some kind of ethics and codes. But that's looking in the world, looking in the countries. But what about in satsang? Satsang is a very, very broad spectrum where according to the Shikshapatri, according to the Satsangi Jivan, according to the Dharma Mrut for the Santos, according to different rules and regulations that Bhagwan Swami Narayan has given and through those rules and regulations one um, has to kind of follow to a certain extent, to a s certain standard and f just like how countries differentiate some f have stricter rules, so they're very, very, you can say, uh, highly based economy. They're very, very clean, and their reputation is very, very good. In the same way, the more rules a satsangi follows, the more that satsangi would be considered uh, to be a greater of a spiritual level. So as youths, um, young adults, teenagers, of Luedam Parivar. This presentation was compiled um, and made approximately about six years ago, but it's a wonderful way to explain how one can follow the ethics or you can say rules and regulations of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, which is given in the form of a roller coaster. So this whole, you can say, presentation is in the form of a roller coaster and you'll be able to see as we go along um, and I'll also explain one by one. So let's take a look at the coaster of ethics today. Ethics. <clears throat> now what is it? What is something that we know about it? What can we say that we know about? Well before we go into even ethics Coaster rules, meaning the roller coaster rules, warning, watch the ride first so you know what to expect. Now, in this video, you'll be able to see, uh, and from there, you'll feel that you're actually in uh, such kind of situation, uh, such kind of, a, you can say, enjoyment uh, uh, park. And from there, uh, we'll go ahead and enter into our um, main presentation.
So as you can see here, this is actually a roller coaster in an amusement park. And there's people here that are, it just started out and it's going back and forth and you can feel it actually a little bit if you're sitting in a big screen TV actually that you know you're inside of a roller coaster and yes these kinds of roller coasters do exist in the world and you can just see right wow okay uh, okay some people are having fun and some people are just actually might be even throwing up you never know as the whole roller coaster goes by that's approximately mm, three minutes roller coasters usual uh, length is about three to five minutes at a very maximum speed and from there, that ends our ride. So you saw that you went through a roller coaster. And why are we going to take this whole example and use it in the form of roller coaster? You will see in the near future. Moving on. Welcome to the Coaster of Ethics. Attention, keep your head, hands, arms, legs, and feet inside the ride at all times. You know how in amusement parks, there's always that one <coughs> person announcing the one that controls the rides uh, on the speaker, you know, to do this exact thing. So we want to also do the same thing, but not physically, but in a mental fashion. So we would like to focus, we would like to uh, give our total attention to this very particular aspect so we can grasp it very easily and attain Bhagwan Swaminarayan and Puja Guruji's Rajipo. Let's begin. So again, we are going to go into a roller coaster and it's going to be a ride. It's 110 meters in height. And I'm sure all of you who've been through the roller coaster actually uh, go through this time where it's actually climbing up. You know when it starts to get really scary? Uh, about 70% uh, up. So as you're looking around, you're getting higher and higher. And uh, one thought that occurs in our mind is uh, what's going to happen? Well. Let's take a look. Now, you know, prayers are always there. Kids are always frantic. But morals versus ethics. Now, morals versus ethics, that's something that we should learn in order to grasp the concept, concept of this uh, coaster of ethics. So morals, uh, they're individualized code of right and wrong. And ethics are standardized code of right and wrong. Both define what is considered acceptable behavior for the individual or the group. Now, <clears throat> morals, you can say, are individualized, meaning in the form of a Hari Bhagat should not eat onion and garlic. That's something that is an example of a moral um, because it's centrally based on one single person. And ethics are something that are standardi standardized, meaning... Uh, standard meaning it's it has to do with a general public. Now, for our Loyadam Parivar, Parivar meaning our Loyadam family, how many ever book those there are worldwide? There has to be some ethics that are set up. And those ethics are something that we should abide by uh, in order to look, feel, and move as one unit. Again, I'm going to say this one more time. Morals are something that an individual Hari Bhakta follows on a usual basis. Um, but ethics are something that are more kind of on a general base. And as Loyadam Parivar, we should move, feel, and exactly do according to everyone's perspective or you can say to, according to the ethics that are set by our organization so that we work as one unit. Now, for example now, ethics uh, which are not proper are something where, suppose we go to uh, a, f a festival and there's five of us, five friends, and we go to one same temple, but one friend does the Tilak channel, the other one doesn't. One has a kanti, the other one doesn't. One is wearing white and white, and the other one is wearing uh, casual clothes. The other one is wearing dress, pants, and shoes, and shirt. So everyone looks very different. But as Loedam uh, Parivar, we youths, teenagers, everyone in perspective should have a certain kind of standard or code that we should abide by so that 
we look as one unit and also Bhagwan Swami Narayan becomes pleased. That's the main point and intention behind this. So as we move on, as you can see in examples in society, respect for another's property, refraining from violence against another, and treating others with civility. Now respect for another's property, that's something that we look at in society and we can see that we have certain respect even as most of us or some of us are born in the United States. We can see that, you know, we have neighbors but we never try to disturb them, their property, or we never try to, uh, you know, disrupt them in any way. We never try to refrain from, uh, refraining from violence against another. So we don't really try to cause any kind of uh, violence. And another thing is uh, we treat others with civility, meaning respect. Um, that These are all just standard um, codes that we follow as a society. Now, what are some standard codes we can follow as Aloedam Parivar Bhakta? That's what we like to look at. Kindly respect our environment. Please clean up after your dog. It's a social and lawful responsibility. I'm sure most of you have seen these signs in parks and from there. Uh, we even follow this standard rule. But as a Loyadam Parivar Hari Bhakta, do we follow the standards of the organization? That's something that we should ask ourselves. Now, what is expected? Uh, what and how should I behave as a Loyadam Parivar Bhakta? That's something that we want to reflect on. And that's why first um, I wanted to present to you some, you can say, orderly examples so you understand the concept that there's two kinds of, uh, you can say, codes of living. One is moral and one is ethics. Moral, again, is something that is individualized. You should do Tilak Chanla Bhagat. Bhagwan Swami Narayan has commanded you, all of us, to do it, so you should do it. And Something with the ethics is something which is standardized, which is in a general platform as a body, as a group, as a unit. So we, we're looking at that unit part right now, because in the past, past lectures we have um, actually re reflected on the Shikshapatri and so on and so forth. So we know, but as a unit, we don't know how to behave, act, uh, walk, talk. So that's something we would like to take a look at today. So the Shiksha Patri. Sri Maharaj has set standards. What to eat, what not to eat, what to drink, what not to drink, what to speak, what not to speak, what to see, what not to see. see. And there's so many others, but I just wanted to kind of um, give you a general perspective of what Bhagwan Swaminarayan has set. Now all these are very, very simple things, but Bhagwan Swaminarayan is so kind to us that <coughs> he wants each and every bhakta to be complete. And according to the Vachnarut Gurira, middle chapter 45, Bhagwan Swami Narin even says that I do not want to even leave one, you can say, um, defect, even as small as a sesame seed, in my Hari Bhakta. That's how much Bhagwan cares for us. Then why not take that care and imply it into our life so that Bhagwan becomes pleased? Why not see that daya, that compassion that Bhagwan and his Ekantik Satpurush are constantly showering upon us and infuse it into our life so that we can make our life divine? Why not? So Bhagwan Swamiran has set the standards. This is just a brief overview. From there, you'll be able to see. <clears throat> now, Never stand up while a riot is in motion. Of course, that's one of the rules that they always, but how can you stand? That's also a question. But, you know, some of us, uh, some of us try to, you know, wiggle out of the whole safety harness. Some of us try to, you know, s try to maneuver a little differently. And due to that, uh, we can't really, uh, we try to not break the rules, but we still break the rules. Why? Well, let's see. Well, there you go. You see that? Now, a person hanging on right there, 
Well, kids, all of you, I'm sure you don't do any of this, but this is definitely something that is uh, in our life if we don't be careful. Now, this is an example of uh, a clip art anim uh, animation uh, image where a person is just holding on to uh, a roller coaster, a cart. But is this happening to us? What do you, what do I mean by this? Well, you know, the coaster, let's look at it as our religion or our organization that we uh, belong to. Now, sometimes what happens is that instead of sitting in the seat and enjoying the ride, we tend to maneuver our way out of that safety harness and try to go our own ways. We try to set our own standards and we try to set our own rules instead of following the rules and standards of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and his Ekantik Satpurush. That is when this exact image rises up. That is when such kind of scenarios are kind of created. So how to prevent from us uh, from staying in one stand, or how to prevent from us kind of going, going out of the box and just staying in one standard uh, according to Bhagwan and Puja Guruji's wish is something to reflect upon. Now, I would like to take you into um, a practical scenario. And from there, um, I call it the tight squeeze, okay? So you'll be able to see um, and understand this whole um, story. So from there, um, suppose you just graduated from high school, okay? Something that's very, very exciting. Four years of it, uh, very, very uh, exciting. Uh, and, you know, you studied very, very hard. And from there, you actually got a good SAT score. So due to that, and you maintain a good uh, GPA. Due to that, you also got into a very, very good college. So you're very excited and something that um, you're looking forward to. You're in that excitement where everything else is forgotten. Let's put it that way. So your friends wanted to celebrate by going out to eat. Something simple, right? Um, we devotees really don't do any kind of other extremes. But even this may be an extreme or is an extreme in the eyes of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and his Ikandik Satpurush if we want it to be. So your friends want to celebrate and you know all of you all graduated at the same time and you want to go to eat. Now they know you're a religious freak and you don't eat outside food. They know this. It's a very, very, for the past four years, they've been uh, going through each and every, uh, you can say, uh, day with you and they know that you're very, very religious and you don't do anything outside of the box. But they still put the pressure on you. They want you to enjoy, they tell you, come on, you've worked this hard, you got into a good university, I mean, it's one single day. Is it really going to hurt you, man? Um, due to many, many um, friends pressuring you, you're also pumped because of the graduation and you give in. That's when this tight squeeze comes in. Now, giving in is one thing and kind of, you know, letting go of everything else is another. But in this situation, this is a small situation, you give in by eating outside food. Now, you're probably thinking, did I do that big of a crime or a penalty, according to Bhagwan's eyes? Well, it depends on how you look at it. According to the Vachanan Ruth, even Bhagwan Swaminarayan says that such a bhakta, even, um, even if he breaks even this, one of the smallest rules, he feels that he has broken a major injunction or rule of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. And on the other side, Bhagwan Swamiran says that, you know, um, ask the Satpurush and, you know, do some kind of atonement and you'll be forgiven, no matter what it is. So, would you kind of like to, which one, which way would you like to take? That's something to think about. But you eat outside food which contains on onion and garlic. That's your crime. Now, as a Loyadam Parivar Bhakta, a standard is set that you know, we as bhaktos should not eat outside food uh, anywhere, anywhere, uh, and especially something that contains onion and garlic. Now, this is a standard that this is a rule that's set by Bhagwan Swaminarayan, and a standard which is set in the organization. From there, there is no kind of uh, excuse, or there is no kind of you can say uh, uh, you can say any kind of uh, other dealings. 
This is just straightforward. But sometimes, uh, dear teenagers, uh, you as youths, young adults, uh, we tend to give in. And this is one example I gave you, but there's many other examples that I think you would more be able to reflect on. And we let go of our standard as an organization. We forget that we are part of Ledam Parivar. We forget that we are Puja Guruji's in Ekantik Satpurush, a Nanadi Mukta of Akshar Dham, who has come here especially just to liberate our soul, make our soul pure, so that we would be able to behold Bhagwan Swami Narayan's Murti constantly. We forget this, and due to that, we tend to go our ways and follow our minds and the rules and standards of our mind. Now, is it really worth it? That's a question. So from there, we take this ride and, you know, right, wrong, it depends. Now, did you make the right decision? Well, on one hand, you know, your friends are there and you don't want to kind of break the relationship that you've built. Uh, nonetheless, uh, they've helped you out, so then you're kind of like pressured. You don't want to let them down. So that's one thing. On the other hand, on the other hand, completely no kind of, you can say, direct connection or communication. Bhagwan Swaminarayan has not told you, oh, I'm very happy that you didn't eat outside. Or you have not been congratulated or you have not been, uh, you know, put on a pedestal where, you know, many people have congratulated you and told you that, you know, you know, you really did a good fight. So due to that, you kind of feel like on one side I'm getting nothing, on the other side I'm getting so much, then it's okay if I break this rule. But that's not proper as a loyadam parivar bhakta. We should not go with the flow of the world, but we should go with the flow of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and his Ekantik Satpurush. That is our way. That is something that we should hold as a standard. May it be playing games, may it be, may it be um, you know, watching TV, may it be doing something extracurricular outside. Yes, those are all good activities, yet they should be in such a limit that your life is also kind of um, intertwined with some kind of religious activity and some kind of religious flow. Now, if there's no religious activity or flow inside of your life, then how can we be considered a part of Vedam Parivar? That's definitely something to think about. So we want to lift our standards. We want to make our standards stronger. We want to elevate our way of living and our way of thinking so that Bhagwan Swaminarayan and his Ikantik Satpurush can accept us keep us in their heart and take us to Akshardham and give us their Rajipo. Something that may not be seen right now. You know, uh, usually <clears throat> those who like science and those who are really, uh, you know, fanatics of science, what they're based off of is proof. If they see proof, then they believe it. Evidence, without evidence, nothing. But religious religion is so... F blind that you don't get the fruits of anything until the end that's just how Bhagwan has said it you may see progress and that is fruits if we're really trying hard yes but Akshar Dham uh, you know leaving this body going to Akshar Dham or you know experiencing some divinity that's something that's a long process and it'll take some time. But if we expect that we don't eat outside food one time and expect something very, very high the next day, that's just not going to happen because Bhagwan is so rare, Bhagwan is so precious that Bhagwan's value is beyond any kind of comprehension of the human mind. So Bhagwan doesn't give away like that. But this world does. The world is different. And Bhagwan is different. So which way do we want to follow? The way of Bhagwan or the way of the world? That's something to think about, kids. What was 
Was your decision ethical? Something that we can ask ourselves. If you were in this situation or any other situation, was it ethical? Was it something worth it? Was it something according to the standards of Loyadam Paribar? That's something that you can definitely ask. Now this is a bad decision and here's what happens, guilt. You see this man over here carrying this whole, you can say letters, word of guilt. And look at how much weight is on, or, the, uh, or, or how much weight is on person's arms. Because guilt is something that is that heavy. Guilt weighs a person down. Guilt is something that destroys one's internal process. And due to that, externally it's seen through facial expressions and other body movements. But if we don't want to go into that kind of guilt trip, if we do not want to go into and, you know, break our standard, then why make such kind of a decision? Stay firm. Believe that Bhagwan and his Ekandik Satpurusha Puja Guruji will save us, help us, take us to Akshar Dham, and keep going on the path of spirituality. That's all we have to do. That's our job. Everything else they'll take care of. Your only hope, become honest with Santo. Something that is so, such uh, you can say such a tonic, such a moral booster that without any, you, if you don't have any other spiritual endeavor, but if you have honesty, if you have hope, then everything else will come, slowly but surely. So then this whole situation arises and you give in and everything and you feel horrible. So what you do is every Saturday you come to Mandir and you talk with Santos, do Samagam and something that you feel like doing is telling Santo. So that's something that you've heard of, that's something that you know is a good idea. Now, from there, how do you approach a Sant? Well, according to Bhagwan Swami Narayan's Vachnamut Gadada, first chapter 58, there is a question asked by Sadhguru Sri Anandanan Swami, that how can the great Satpurush become pleased? And he shows his ways, and from these ways, Bhagwan, Bhagwan Swaran shows his ways. He says, Bhagwan Swaran says, if one gets um, uh, rid of those, or kind of renunciates those swabhaos of uh, whatever, ego, greed, lust, anger, anger, so on and so forth, the second option is he becomes honest with the sant. The third is he physically bows down to the sun, and he becomes humble. All these rule, uh, all these kinds of standards Bhagwan puts out. But from there, one of the ways to please the Akandik Satpurush is is becoming honest and staying honest. The Akandik Satpurush is pleased by this. Now, the Akandik Satpurush is not pleased by giving him one billion dollars, even according to Swamini Vato. Swami says that the Gandhik Satpurush is not pleased by giving worldly objects or any kind of other objects, but is pleased by folding hands and bowing down and becoming humble. Now, such a Satpurush is not pleased by one billion dollars or two billion dollars or, or famous, rich, nice cars and buildings, but can be pleased by becoming humble and by becoming honest. Now, why not take that route? Now, it's not like this situation everyone has been in, but to learn from this, we can see that and we can understand that that honesty with the Kandik Satpurush Santo is something that should be part of Loyadam Parivar Bhakto's life. Hope is something that should be part of Loyadam Parivar Bhakto's life because from hope, and from honesty, everything else will arise. May we see this now, or we, may we not see it, but the scriptures are never wrong. And according to the Vachnamrut Bhagwan, Swami Narayan's words are never wrong and will never be wrong. Because Bhagwan Swami Narayan is the Supreme Lord of Lords. So hold on to these two things and everything else should be fine. Now, check this out guys. Sometimes rides takes, uh, takes us up, spins us around, does 360s, completely goes and look at these rings. I mean, 
don't people become sick? That's that's a question that arises in my mind. It's very, very difficult to actually go on a roller coaster. Some people like it. I mean, some don't. Okay, so you saw that how many times um, the circle went round and round. Now, in our life right now, what what to do, what not to do, what should we do? Well, the power of forgiveness. That's something that lives inside of our Puja Guruji and Santo's life. You know, to become honest and, and to forgive, and, and that's something that's just a way that Santo's regulate or so santos operate on a regular basis now you are very afraid that the situation happened and you become honest but what happens is you were expecting some kind of bigger punishment or some kind of bigger you know uh, atonement but instead the satpurush puja guruji and santos they forgive you they say completely don't worry about it uh and they give you some kind of small thing and they just say that Next time, be careful. So from there, we can see that it's something that is not that hard to do. But if we can, we should really learn to become honest and keep hope so that we can attain the daya of Bhagavan Swaminarayan in his Ekantik Satpurush. Now moving on. Looking at the great. You know, the best way to learn is by looking at the Satpurush's life. The Satpurusha's life is so divine. The Satpurusha's life has so many uh, different perspectives that we can grasp and we can develop better, better thinking. And due to that, we can elevate our life. So our Puja Guruji, he is here. And, you know, a person, any person on this earth um, can be mostly recognized, mostly I'm saying, through the eyes and face. And you can say that there's many people that we can't recognize, but those who are filled with love, compassion, daya, it can all be seen in the eyes. And from this picture over here of Puja Guruji, we can see that that daya and compassion and that love for Maharaj, Santo, Bhakto, our parivar is there flowing and flowing. It's something that is is like Amrut. Um, and and, and it's Amrut is kind of like, um, we can say that in heaven, it's Swarg, it's called. There is this, um, you can say nectar-like tonic, which is like called Amrut, which if you drink it, you would never die. Uh, and it is very pure. In the same way, the eyes of the Akantik Satpurusha are kind of like that. And... Why I took this example is that Puja Guruji's life is so divine that is that from there we can attain much kind of spiritual, you can say, strength. And just like how a bodybuilder or someone that wants to become very, very buff and strong kind of has, um, you know, a work ethic of working out and their power, their strength is those protein bars and shakes and stuff like that. And due to that, they get motivation to do even more. They look at other pictures and they want to say, I become like, I want to become like this. On the other hand, we as Loyadam Pariyar Bhakto should gain strength from our Satpurush by looking at his character, by looking at his virtues, by looking at his standard morals, by looking at uh, how he lives and operates on a daily basis. If we do this, then we'd be easily, easily be able to develop affection for Bhagwan and also attain Akshardham very easily. Because according to the uh, according to the Vachana Gadada middle chapter fifty nine, Bhagwan Swaminarayan states that only God and his son can grant liberation. Bhagwan Swaminarayan says only God or so there's two options. So those that only attach directly to God may not reach God because God is so beyond one's comprehension, is such a high entity that it's very difficult. But if one holds on to the Akantik Satpurush who is here on this earth, then one would easily be able to attain God. That's just the operation, that's just the way that Bhagwan Swaminarayan has said 
in this religion. So from there, if we learn to look and live from the characters and see the character and virtues of our Ekantik Sat Purush Puja Guruji, then everything else would be attained easily. Guruji's life equals the pinnacle of ethics. Well, how so? Well, there's this one story that I remember that uh, in Kandari Gurukul, when um, one of the buildings, the school buildings were being built, um, there is many laborers there in, uh, in India. And, um, you know, the fields are very open, so many uh, cobra snakes uh, always are roaming around the fields. And uh, those laborers must have uh, killed the cobra snakes, two of them. Um, a little bit on purpose, we can say. And Punji Guruji found out that the cobra snakes were killed. Now, even if they were venomous species, um, they're still living uh, or, uh, living uh, creatures. So, uh, according to Bhagwan Swami Narayan's rules uh, in the Shikshapatri, uh, Hari Bhakto should not, um, you know, kill even the smallest of insect. Then what is it for a snake, right? But these were labors, these were not Hari Bhaktos, but Puja Guruji's compassion and daya and character is at such a high level that Puja Guruji, when he found this out, um, he fasted for three days without any food because he paid for the atonement of those two labors. And the third of us, or the uh, third fast, was for himself and he totally did this and he gave the you can say the the fruits to those laborers so that they wouldn't have to um you know um become condemned and become uh, you know have to go to a, a, a worse place and maybe hell or wherever so puja guruji did this now a moral ethics right there is not to kill but the satpurush instead of telling those laborers or instead of making those laborers guilty, he took that whole punishment on himself. And the santos would go there and, you know, tell Guruji, to, please eat, please eat. But Guruji did not say anything and would not eat anything and did not reveal his motive for fasting until a week later. And then the santos found out and said, Guruji, how, how, how could this be possible? And Puja Guruji fasted for two non-satsangis. Then we are very, very fortunate um, who are Puja Mara, Ma, our Takoji Maharaj and Gansha Maharaj and Puja Guruji's uh, refuge. We're underneath the refuge. Then, of course, they're going to help us out. Of course, they're going to guide us in the right direction. Of course, they're going to take us to Akshradham. There is no doubt then we should look at these kinds of prasangs and incidences in the Ekantik Satpurusha's life and gain perspective. Aim high. The greatest danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we miss it, but that is too low and we reach it. That is a quote that's said by Michelangelo. I want to repeat that. Aim high. The greatest danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we miss it, but that it is too low and we reach it. Meaning we should keep high standards that we belong to Maharaj, we belong to Puja Guruji, we belong to Santos. Then we want to become Ekantik, we want to become the highest of devotees and reach Bhagwan's Dham without any kind of obstacles in the middle. If we have such kind of high standards, but some Hari Bhaktos, after coming into Mandir, for through two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years. Um, they say that I do the Tilak channel, I wear the Kanti, I don't even eat, eat outside food, I do the puja every day. That's it. I mean, if that level, book, if, if we were to give that level, uh, a Hari Bhakta a level of grade A, B, and C, if he's a B level Hari Bhakta, he stays at such a satisfied position that he would stay and remain as a B Bhakta, but he would not uh, elevate to an A Bhakta. So from there, they stay stuck, and due to that, uh, they do not reach an elevated spiritual state. So from there, we should aim high and learn to uh, you know, set high goals. Q. 
Keep your eyes looking forward and your head up to protect your neck from injury. That's a rule that has given all about staying balanced. Balancing our life with spirituality and balancing our life with social, uh, you can say, social um, affairs and everything is something that Aloyadam Parivar Bhakta should learn to do. Now, from there, if we learn to balance, then everything else will come easy and we will be able to live a very, very easy life. And Bhagwan would become pleased and our Satpurush would become pleased. Now, in world religions, there are standards that I want to take you really shortly a uh, brief overview. Christianity, there is ten commandments. Nonetheless, Islam, there is a Quran. Now, why I'm naming these is that so you can understand that there's, it, this is not something new in our religion, but we want to sta set a standard as Luedam Parivar Bhakta that how should our life be? How should our standard be so that we can please Bhagwan and his Satpurush? Jainism has their rules. Sikhism has their rules. Now, these are just standards. Buddhism has their rules. And Swaminarayan, what about us? What do we have? What are our rules? Well, the Shiksha Patri. Bhagwan Swaminarayan has set this, has given us a gift. So you decide what you want to do. You decide how you want to live. You decide what character you want to give. So saying this, now this is our final ride. Thank you for riding the coaster of ethics. Quick note, take frequent breaks between roller coaster rides, meaning slowly but surely take one rule at a time. Bhagwan Swaminarayan has said in the uh, Shiksha Patri uh, to do Tilak channel. Now, suppose you are a little afraid of public ridicule, then take a couple of years out and do it later on. But that doesn't mean one should not do it one's whole life. So take frequent breaks, slowly but surely, one after another, follow each rule. And after one, after you've set a rule, do not go back. And second is, don't get on a ride that looks poorly maintained. That's another thing. Well, you know, sometimes we see other religions, sometimes we look at other, other uh, you, can, you can say, uh, ethics. And yeah, Puja Guruji says, respect all, follow one, and hate none. No one is wrong, everyone is right in their way, but what we have attained, we should strictly, firmly have faith and abide by it, but not be allured or attracted by any others. That's something that should be set as a standard. So this is the, mo uh, the coaster of ethics. I hope you had a good ride. Saying this, my humble, Jay Swaminarayan.